Let's see here. Make sure I get on first. Uh. Okay. Let's also... There we go. Now I can see... Alrighty. So, um, I'm going to clean up. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. I'm going to do a quick clean up. I say quick, uh, hopefully it's quick of this. Uh, so if you've been to my YouTube channel as of yesterday, we did some reality capture where I did some quick photogrammetry. Um, I guess we can, uh, you know what, I, I still have it up. I had to re-export an OBJ here. So basically went outside with my camera phone, took a couple pictures of this little statue I had. It's, this statue came with my house, kind of a creepy little statue I have in my front yard that's just been sitting there for the last eight years or so. And uh, so what, I, what I'm doing is I'm just doing a quick uh, photogrammetry capture. And uh, like I said before, I guess I can pull this up. Hold on. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Playlist. There we go. If you go to my playlist here, you can go to the photogrammetry tab. Uh, I don't have everything uploaded. This was reality capture. I'm going to have another one for photo scan today, I think, if I have enough time to upload those. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use ZBrush to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. It did a pretty good job considering I didn't really take that good of pictures and I used my camera phone and, uh, but I mean, like I said before, it did a pretty stellar job, but there's a few things I wanted to change. I basically just exported the mesh. Uh, I didn't bother exporting with textures or anything because what we're going to do is clean it up in here, send it back over, and then reproject um, the textures from the original point cloud data and the textures from the images. So we get a much nicer result with the UVs that we want. And we can do the UVs and ZBrush as well. Um, I guess we can also load that up too. Let me see. Uh, what are we doing? We're doing photogrammetry comparison. It's kind of a big file. I've got some really big textures in here. I was playing around with some settings. Um, there we go. So if we go to here to the skin shader here. So this is basically the object um, captured here. But you can see uh, we have a few little errors in here. So we can clean this up, make it look a not, lot nicer, project the textures back, and then we'll do another cleanup pass. Maybe throw in the substance or something. Not today. Um, but you can see I uh, got, got quite a bit of detail in there. A lot of cool stuff going on. Like I said before, she's been sitting in my front yard, so that's why she's a little bit dirty, but I think it adds to her charm. So we'll go ahead and, <clears throat> so like I said before, I imported uh, the geometry. She was sitting on a box, so that grabbed a few uh, extra points. You could clean these points up before you send it out, but it wasn't a big deal. Uh, then I did a quick cleanup pass, then I duplicated that one off, and I dynameshed it. Now I'm going to want to keep this hole down here, give me a new polygroup for that hole at the bottom. I'm going to try to keep that around if I can. And uh, hey, good morning, uh, everybody. Um, we're going to do a little bit of this. If you have any other suggestions, I don't think it's going to take me the entire time we're on to them this morning. So shout them out. But um, I, what we could do, and this is what I did for the photo scan cleanup, is you can always remember you have booleans available to you. Um, you can use Dynamesh, and this is a Dynamesh. So if you wanted to, you could. Uh, throw a sphere on there, we can go split, uh, unmask points, it'll throw it below, and then we can make that subtractive, turn on live boolean, and then, let's turn off solo here, there we go, and then you can just use the sphere to kind of cut through, let's take the sphere, there we go. We can take the sphere and we can kind of cut through the object um, like this and you can preview it before you dynamesh it as a subtractive where you can make a boolean mesh out of this. Uh, one thing I did with photo scan, let's go ahead and delete that, was I went through here and I like, okay, so there's, uh, see, it's a, it's such a good job. I can't really do it on this one, but you can like mask these areas and then extract them and then use those as booleans as well. I'm going to try another method today. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But I'm going to break this thing up. Hold on. Preferences. Edit. Turn off the line cursor to surface. I'm going to uh, break this thing up in Dynamesh. And you can see, here's my original 
I always keep my original around in case I want to project that detail back. And then here's my Dynamesh. I lost a little bit of the high frequency detail, which in this case isn't a bad thing necessarily, but if I want to, I can always project that detail back. Um, but let's go ahead and grab our mask lasso here. And I am going to pop her head off here. Let's go through here. And it might actually be easier. You know, I'm going to leave her head alone. I'm going to take her arms off first because that's really where the trouble points are. And I'm going to take them right out of her sleeves, I think. So I'm going to take her left arm here. I'm just, uh, again, holding down control, grabbing that mask lasso. And we'll go ahead and separate out her leg and her arm here. And they are, you know, they do warn you in the photogram if you're like, oh, you know, don't don't use these settings. You'll end up with millions of polygons. I'm like, come on, guys. I got ZBrush. I don't think a million polygons is going to hurt anything. So I did this in normal detail, by the way, as far as the mesh is concerned. So I could have done high, but it only took a couple minutes. And I think this is good enough for our demonstration purposes. So let's go ahead and take this here. Okay, I'm going to hold down Control, Alt, and Tap. And then I go ahead and kind of tighten up that mask a little bit. I'm going to hit, uh, looks like I grabbed a little bit of her face. Sorry, this isn't the most exciting part. All right, we will hit, and you know what, we do need to clean this up. We'll go back to Mask Pin, and we can just go through here, and we can just mask that. And then, all right, here we go. Hit Control, W, let's turn off the line here. And we got a polygroup for her arm. And I can isolate this one, or I can go through here. I can go like mask uh, under our brush settings here, auto masking, mask by polygroups up to 100. And now when I start uh, control dragging, it's not going to mask on that blue part. So however you want to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just isolate so I can grab my lasso here. And we'll grab this side here. And the whole reason I ended up going through this photogrammetry stuff is so I would have something for my Houdini game dev tools stuff, uh, videos coming out. I keep saying stuff. This will give me something to play around with. But I gotta clean it up first, and ZBrush is far and away one of the best tools for doing that. Like I said before, I can handle just about anything you can throw at it, and there's a lot of really interesting cool ways you can go about doing a little bit of cleanup here. Like I said before, you can just use booleans and stuff, but it gets so complicated getting inside her, you know, her armpits and her, and on inside of her arms in here, it gets just gets a mess to mess with. So I think this will be a little bit easier. We can use the power of Dynamesh to separate these things out. So let's say, let's call this our piece of her arm here, and we'll leave her shirt sleeve here. Control Alt Tap to sharpen that mask up a little bit. Again, sorry, this is kind of a boring part here. Control W, and now we've got this piece here, and we can see, you know, we we have this piece here, and it looks like I grabbed a little piece here. All I got to do is hold down Control Shift, Control Shift Alt to get rid of that piece, Control W to mark that one, and now both of these will end up in the same polygroup. Uh, incidentally, if you Control Shift click on two polygroups at their border, it should grab both of them. And then you just hit Control W. So you can always go through and kind of isolate uh, polygroups like that. So uh, we got this here. Um, I think, you know what, let's go ahead. And I think the rest of the, the body's okay. I'm going to go ahead and pop her head off. And uh, we can actually do that just through visibility if we want to. So if we go here through Select Lasso and then hold down Alt. So instead of masking, we're just going to use visibility. And I'm just going to go through here and get rid of the polygons. Let's go ahead and turn off polyframe here so you can see a little bit better. There we go. And there we go. And, and we're going to invert this. Just hold down Control Shift and hold on just a second. Let me grab this. Can't select lasso and talk at the same time. Okay, so we can control shift drag and that'll go ahead and invert that and we can make sure that do we get too much of the head, do we get too little? And if we did, we can go ahead and send that back to our other visibility selection. You know, I guess the 
bad thing about doing visibility is I could select through. Also, the reason I keep switching back to select rectangle is because when you're on select lasso, one of the features of that is you can select an edge ring. So sometimes you'll go through here and you'll end up doing something like that. Um, so if you do select rectangle, it won't do that. Um, is there any special software used to take your photos uh, into a 3D mesh? Yeah, so uh, like I mentioned before, we did reality capture, which I have here, and then also photo scan. I did another tutorial on that one. Um, reality capture is really quick, and it did a really stellar, really bang up job. So I'm going to give the nod reality capture on this one. Um, I, I mean, I could be, I'm, I'm, I'm not a photogrammetry expert. The guys at work uh, do much more photogrammetry than I do. As environment artists, uh, I do more of the characters and props, which, uh, you know, I guess props, you could um, end up doing some photogrammetry capture, just not the games I work on. Uh, everything I work on is sci-fi. Can't really go out and scan uh, a new zany sci-fi weapon, unfortunately. Okay, so, but you can scan weapon parts or just stuff you find around and use that as reference or just to get the, the shape of things and use that for concepting purposes. Um, but, okay, so we've got the head here with visibility, and we'll go ahead and hit Control w with that visible. So now we've got one, two, three polygroups, and I think that'll be enough for cleanup purposes. So now what I'm going to do, this is all dynameshed here. We've dynameshed this. We've got 950,000 active points. The original here is about 800 points and about 1.7 million polygons. And if you go through here, you're going to see wherever it has a pretty dense uh, mesh, you know that it had enough information to give you the topology, you, or at least reconstruct the object uh, well enough. Uh, where it gets a little bit messy in here is where it didn't have enough information, so it kind of just went through and looks like it just did a closed holes operation. So probably like I clean this up a little bit, but really it's so it's, it's so unimportant in these areas here too, that uh, I wouldn't even really know how to clean that up. But I do know this is not right. So we got this here. And now what I think I want to do is go ahead and split these off and dynamesh them separately. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to select rectangle here. We'll do split hidden. And then we'll alt tap the body. And we'll go ahead and split hidden. And then alt tap the arm. Or alt tap the body again. And then do another split hidden. Uh, you could also do a split group split. But I didn't really want to split that bottom polygroup off the body. So I kind of took the long route, uh, but either way should work. So now that I've got these all split off, if I go ahead, move my mic here a little bit, uh, control drag, that'll go ahead and do a close holes operation. Alternatively, I could also just do, let me go ahead and see, do we hit an area? Uh, we could just run a geometry modified topology close holes. And then if I want to, I can hit W, control tap that, uh, or I can go over here. I still have mask by polygroups turned on, so I can just go through here and I can just use the move brush on this polygroup and it'll just select that polygroup. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can get that, uh, that those thin areas here just kind of pushed away so I don't, when I dynamesh again, it doesn't give me a really thin area here. So uh, we'll go ahead and pull this back like so. And these polygroups in here, I don't think I'll need to worry about too much. I do try to keep my polygroups around just in case I need to do a quick selection. Um, I could hit Control W, but I'll keep them around for a little bit. I'm also going to switch to Smooth Stronger here and then drop that Z intensity down. If you don't have Smooth Stronger, I think I say this every live stream, go to your comma key, which is your light box, and then go to your QRS element OP. Smooth, and then there's Smooth Stronger somewhere in there, and then you can just load that up. I have it auto-loaded whenever I load up ZBrush. And again, really all it's doing is going over here to Brush Modifiers, uh, Smooth Brush Modifiers, not Brush Modifiers. There it is. And it's changing the uh, Weighted Smooth Mode uh, to 1, which is Smooth Stronger. Uh, we also want to turn off Mask by Polygroups, so we can go ahead and smooth across polygroups. It doesn't keep us constrained within one. Uh, we could also, I mean, I guess we could do, you know, grab this polygroup and then do Control shift x to expand, and we can expand out to where it gets kind of messy, and then we can go in here to our deformation menu. I say our deformation menu is down here. 
And you could do, we don't want to do a polish by feature, we'll just do a regular old polish. And that'll kind of smooth that out as well. You could also do smooth if you wanted to. And then we can just redyne the mesh as needed. There we go. And we'll go ahead and turn our smooth uh, intensity up a little bit on our smooth stronger brush. Of course, when you do that, you're going to want to do, uh, have your, hold on, shift. So you have your smooth brush selected while you're changing your brush settings. And the reason I split that off, oh, you know what we should do? Let's do this. Before I get too far, I'm going to go ahead, because I want to preserve this stuff. I don't want to accidentally go through here and start doing this kind of thing where it's like, well, you don't want to really touch this stuff. So what I can always do is I can store a morph target. I can also store a layer, I suppose. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and store a morph target. Um, although, now that I think about it, as I'm dynameshing, it's going to kill my morph target. Let's delete my morph target. Let's, you know what, here's, here's what we're going to do. In the areas where I think I'm going to not want to touch it, I'm going to, I actually am going to store a polygroup. Uh, we've already kind of messed up this polygroup quite a bit, but we should be able to just grab these areas really quickly. Although I may want to go ahead and, uh, I guess we can keep that. Trying to think, it's, it's a little too early for me to be thinking and problem solving. I haven't had my coffee yet. Get up out of bed, run to the computer, and then pretend I know what I'm doing. Um, another thing too, if you have really thin meshes, go over here, hold on control, we'll go to uh, turn on back face masking. And that way when we mask through here, uh, it won't unmask on the other side and vice versa. Uh, how's everybody doing? Give her a tech suit. Ah, you know what? I totally should. I could do I could do a quick uh, panel loops on this thing and <laughs> give her something cool looking. Um, yeah, the, the, you, know, you don't have to break this up in the subtools. You can just go through here and do like subtractive. Oh, question was, uh, so the first step is to break down the mesh in the subtools. Uh, I think that's going to be easier for me to work on her just because I can go through here and kind of sculpt her head out and have it sit nicely on her hands. Um, what I did originally, and I haven't uploaded these videos yet, was just put a really complex Boolean in here from extractions that I had done. But it was still really difficult to get in here and get decent sculpts inside of there. So I'm gonna I'm trying a different technique that I think will work. It, it'll end up being a little bit more work, but I think the results will be better. We're all about results. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a new polygroup down here. So if I ever need to, I can go through here, and if I'm while I'm sculpting on here. Um, I can either turn mask by polygroups up to 100 again, or I can just isolate this and mask it and invert it, or I can just hit W and control tap this one, and then we can do, if we want to, let's invert that mask, and that's just control clicking here, or you can click inverse. We can do a quick uh, grow mask, and that'll kind of grow it, and it kind of blurs it a little bit too, so we can grow that a couple times just to give me a little bit more wiggle room here, and we can also turn on view mask so I don't really see it. It's kind of like hiding your selection in Photoshop. So now I know I'm not going to mess up this stuff in here too much, um, but it's not going to, it's going to kind of feather my selection so I'm not uh, so stringently uh, set to my polygroups. Now, of course, if you're not going to read Dynamesh, store a morph target because you can always use your morph brush to morph back. Although, you know what? Now that I think about it, I shouldn't even be that worried. Okay, my brain started to kick in. Um, I can always go back here and do a Z, Z project or a, um, a Z brush. What is it? B Z, Z project brush uh, to get that detail back. So if I mess anything up, I can always go back to my original and get that back. Jeez. So don't, don't fret too much. Sorry, guys. I should remember that. Uh, so we have the standard brush here. That looks a little intense. I don't remember moving that intensity up that much. Uh, but I am going to go in here and we're going to hit, we're going to crank the lazy radius up and then we'll hit L. Um, the, the stroke is where the lazy, where the lazy brush is. I use my custom menu all the time. Uh, if you want more information on how to set that up, go to my playlist here. Obviously, you can go to the Pixelogic Classroom. I just don't know where those links are right now. Uh, but Intro to ZBrush Part 2 playlist in here. I'll walk you through your custom interface and custom menus and buttons and hotkeys and stuff like that. And if you really... If you want to use mine for whatever reason, I don't suggest that you do, but people ask me every once in a while. Go to my gum road and scroll down to the very bottom. And there's a little section called Intro to ZBrush Files, and you can just download my 
custom interface and hotkeys and stuff like that. If that's your thing. But like I said, it's really super easy to just, uh, you lagging a little bit. Really super easy to uh, just make your own. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down reality capture here. Let's go ahead and save. There we go. Clay brush was feeling a little bit weird. Okay, so we've built this out. Let's go out of solo mode here. I might clean this up a little bit here, but now we've got her face a little bit sculpted out. Now, while we're sculpting, if we wanted to, so you're going to see we have kind of a noise here, and then it's kind of smooth here. Uh, you can go into your clay brush. I'm going to turn off RGB, and we're going to go to surface noise. And if we look... Now this isn't surface surface noise, this is brush surface noise. So you can add surface noise to your brushes here. Um, so if you wanted to kind of match up the noise between these two, let's go to the noise scale and scale this up. And then also drop that strength down, we don't need that much noise. And you can also go in here and kind of change. Now this is going to be higher resolution noise than I'm getting my scan data, but we can always smooth it down later if we want to. Um, so if these kind of match, ish i don't match exactly but we'll call it good enough for my purposes uh, you can hit okay and now you have noise turned on for this brush so as you're using this brush it should be it's very subtle let's crank that intensity up just a bit let's go to edit and we'll do strength mm, well there it is you can kind of see it kind of not um now Another thing you can do, and I, I wouldn't tech really use that, uh, what I would end up doing is applying surface noise and then masking it in the areas where I want it to go, probably. Uh, but that's an option available to you. Uh, let's go ahead and say smooth. I'm going to go ahead and unmask, because again, we can just reproject that detail. So, and we'll smooth that back down. All right, we got our little little face going, looking good. And what we're going to eventually end up doing is dynamishing this stuff back together, but we're going to use this to go ahead and clean out some of these garbage points here. So uh, again, what we can do is let's go ahead and do a close holes operation. And then uh, for this one, I'm going to isolate these holes and then I'm going to do a quick uh, polygroups auto groups. It's in your polygroups menu. And then we'll go mask by polygroups back up to 100 here. And then we'll use our move brush here. Give me a little wiggle room. And we'll re-dynamesh this. It saved our dynamesh settings when you split those off. I just had to turn it back on. And that's, of course, under your... Oh, yeah, I feel bad. Go here. Geometry. Dynamesh. I'm streaming on Pixelogic's channel. I should probably use the ZBrush interface. Um, oh, man. Ooh, I need to stretch before I start streaming. Uh, sorry for the off-topic question. Uh, I was wondering if you happen to know if there's a way to reduce the Gizmo 3D opacity when transforming a model. Um, okay, so yeah, when you're using this and it kind of goes transparent. Um, also, there's some other instances where it does go to transparent. You know, I don't know. Let's see if anybody else has answered. Um, increase precision to Gizmo 3D. That one I can kind of answer maybe. Um, okay, so this one here, it is uh, 624 AM in Austin, Texas right now. Um, so if we go here to preferences, there is gizmo preferences, but I don't think now that you mention it, it just uh, your custom gizmos you can put in here, gizmo size, modifiers, length. Uh, that'd be a good feature. Maybe gizmo transparency would be something cool, unless I'm completely missing where that would be. Uh, so y you know what? Call up ZBrush and drop them a, oh, you don't call them up. You give them a support ticket or a suggestion on the Pixelogic website. And uh, I think that'd be a good one. Now that you mention it, uh, it hasn't, I've really run into an instance where, I, where that has been a huge issue, but I can see where uh, certainly it could be. Uh, so why are we splitting this up? Uh, again, it's just in order to gain access to this quickly so I can go in here and sculpt her sleeve out and get rid of you know this, this stuff in here so here's another thing uh, we can use visibility so 
if I go through here and I, you know, oh, I'm going to get rid of this chunk and then I'm going to, uh, let's uh, invert that here. So I get rid of this chunk and then I go, okay, we're going to delete hidden and then we're going to re-dynamesh. It's going to close that chunk back up. So what I want to do, I think, is we're going to use visibility to get rid of these polygons here and here. And now with those polygons gone, I can go through here now and we can use our clip curve. Let's see if this will work. Come on. There we go. Uh, so now we can just clip those down and that'll give us uh, a little bit of a better solution here. So now when we re mesh this, it'll go ahead and stay down. And now we can smooth this out just a little bit. And let's turn on, and I'm gonna be turning off and on visibility. Now on this one here, we can use clip or this one is probably safe to go ahead and just use uh, visibility here to kind of get rid of this. And then delete hidden. We can do a close holes or you can just dynamesh and it'll close our holes for us. There we go. Looking good, looking good. And I'm going to smooth these down and these edges we can clean up later. And then I'm going to go in here with my trim dynamic brush and we can just knock this back down along her elbow. Now, of course, the more modifications I make, well, here's the thing. Ideally, you want to take enough photos for it to capture the object perfectly. Or you would bring, I would, you know, this girl was only maybe a foot tall, not even. So I could take her in and put her on a turntable and capture all sides and do a really, really professional photogrammetry job on this object in particular. But realistically, uh, that's probably not going to happen. So I'm probably going to be doing a little bit of cleanup so the faster you can get a cleanup and techniques and stuff, the better off you are. I'm not going to take, when I'm out and I'm just doing some photogrammetry stuff, I'm not going to go ahead and go and take uh, hundreds and hundreds of pictures. And so let's go ahead. I saw this arm here. Let's do, let's do another visibility here. And we'll do another clip. So alt once to kind of do the bendy bendy line here and then alt twice to do a sharp. And then go back in here with our trim dynamic. And then we can go in here with our Damien standard brush. This is the old Damien standard brush, not the new one. And we'll go ahead and pull this in. Nothing wrong with a new one. <coughs> um, just the, the old one has a little bit of a different feel that is good for this type of work. And we'll go ahead and give her line in her arm there. Now the good news is the places that the photogrammetry didn't really pick up that well uh, aren't really visible that much to the human observer. But I also want to have something decent so it's not really necessary to clean these things up amazingly well but just thought we just need a little bit better result here. Uh, this stuff right here isn't really a, an, an error. I think that she's got some dirt on her. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. And then this right here, I might need to go ahead and change. Go ahead and push that back underneath her sleeve. Um, she also has like a little ruffle on her sleeve here that probably continues down. Uh, but that'll be part of her body, I think. Uh, so we got her head, we got her arm. Let's go here. And we don't have to auto group these. Oh, we have a little straggler out here. One thing you can do is you can just do a control shift, grab a little piece of your object, control shift A, and then delete hidden. So that way you can just get rid of those real quickly. Uh, topological, now nah, zoom out by polygroups. And we'll go ahead and do Dynamesh. And again, it didn't get a whole lot of information in here, but the form it got was actually not too terrible. We can go ahead and use our clay brush to kind of round this shape out a little bit. And again, we can always project back uh, to the original mesh. 
And when we do that, we can actually store morph targets so we can project a little bit sloppy back to the original mesh if we want to, and then use our morph brush to morph back out. So a lot of different options, which is why I like using ZBrush. There's so many ways to skin all of your cats. There we go. Uh, thanks for showing up, everybody. Hopefully this isn't um, <laughs> too too uh, super super boring. Um, is there no way to smooth the whole thing? You can smooth the whole thing if you'd probably want to isolate these areas first. Uh, like you'd go through visibility or masking or polygrouping or all the above. So you can go like this. Uh, what would be the best way? We'll go visibility first, and then we'll get rid of those polygroups because we don't want to smooth everything because I don't want to get rid of the, the surface detail on the other part. And then you can go into your deformations and you can just run a polish and smooth or you know any, any of these deformations that we'll do like a relax or a smooth will work. Um, but I'm just going to do it manually. So go ahead and cut in through the arm here. There we go. Now this arm, yeah, it's got a little bit of garbage stuff here, so you can use visibility. I guess we can just use clip curve too. And again, the clip curves under the modifiers up here, hold down control shift and you can grab any of these. Uh, you can go through here and hunt down clip curve or hit C uh, and go to your clip menus. I prefer to do like holding down control shift to get quicker access to all of those uh, items and then control will give you all your masks so that way it'll kind of narrow it down for you when you go up in there. Just FYI. There we go. See how this hand's doing here. Um, like I said before, where this meets the other mesh, it probably is going to be somewhat glued to the object, but I can get a sharper transition. It may not be this nice in the actual source geometry, but you know what? We'll get a slightly nicer model, and we can always uh, change the textures up a bit, you know, like clone. The textures around we can use uh, spotlight to move the textures around we can also paint with textures using the texture tab over here a lot of different ways to get that fidelity back here another reason to split this up is i can actually go through here and again i can see okay so this is all just garbage here And you can assign a hotkey if you're doing a lot, if you close holes a lot, uh, you can just make a hotkey for that. I have it over here in my custom menu. And I also usually do like close holes, mirror and weld a lot together. So I just put those buttons close to each other. And then also mirror, mirror and weld I do a lot. So deformations mirror and then geometry modified topology mirror and weld all the time. And again, you can sign hotkeys to it if you do it all the time. I don't know if I do it enough to justify a hotkey, but putting those close together on my custom interface is definitely a time saver. There you go. We can even go in here with our Damien standard brush and round these out just a little bit. All righty. Here. And then she's going to have like the palm of her hand up here. And then this wrist is looking a little bit wonky. Ran out of things to talk about. Sorry, everybody. Okay. So, basically, a bunch of smoothing, a bunch of moving, a bunch of clay brush. Looks like it got your arms a little bit fat in here, so I'm just going to use the move brush to knock that back. And then, we'll go look at the inside of our arm here. Not too bad. We can go ahead and... I think we need to pull that back just a little bit. And 
and this. Now this obviously is going to connect to her body later, but we can go ahead and round out the surface just to make sure that the connection points are somewhat accurate. So it looks like she's got uh, a rounded arm going into her leg and doesn't have a flat surface going in there. And again, I kind of want to stay away from my borders, but I know I can project that back, so not a huge deal. Alrighty. So we've got our head going. And this isn't, I'm trying to remember, it wasn't on this channel. Let me see. Uh, live stream highlights here. Whoa. Um, I've done this type of thing before, but I think it was on my channel. So if you go to my live stream highlights, uh, we did, I took somebody's, um, they, they scanned in their clay model, and then we went through and did some retopology on that, as well as, you know what, now that I think about it, also, if you go to the Lumi questions, I need to add these, uh, we did a T-Rex skull. Kind of the same thing. Uh, well, not really. Uh, this is more of a zero mesh and project type thing with breaking up into polygroups. Um, but if that's interesting to you, go check that out. Okay, so we got our arms, we got our uh, head. And now we just need to do our body really quick. So again, we'll do another close holes. And I'm going to do a quick, oops, quick save. Uh, you can't really see it. You can hit nine to quick save. Uh, it'll quick save based on your preferences in here. So if you go to preferences, quick save. It'll quick save every 20 minutes, or if I leave the computer alone for a minute, uh, it'll do that. Let's mess my polygroups. Oh, it is going to grab both. Okay, so let's isolate these, and we'll do auto groups, polygroups, auto groups. And now go through here and do pull these polygroups through here. Close holes does the best job it can with the information you give it, and if it has a really complex hole, it's going to have a hard time. That's okay, though, because we can fix that. You can go through here, and you can inflate, too, if you just want to inflate this stuff up. Uh, same thing with these. If you just want to go through here and inflate instead of pulling them up, feel free. And you can also, if you want, uh, for example, here, if we hit uh, W and then control tap this one, that'll go ahead and mask it. And then you can just scale these things in like so. I think that'll work. And anything else weird? I think that's good enough. Okay, so we've got her body ready to kind of finalize here a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and uh, turn Dynamesh back on. When we split up our objects, looks like it... Uh, turned off our Dynamesh. There we go. So now, and you don't even, because we can project our detail back, you don't even need to work at this high of a resolution. You can drop it down to whatever Dynamesh resolution you want. And then just again, project your detail back later. And I guess before we send it back, we should probably give it some UV. So you know what, we'll do that too. So that speeds up your workflow. Not that it's slow or anything while we're working, but if you feel like it's slow, you can always drop the Dynamics resolution. It's not going to hurt anything in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this, whatever that is. And we will be retopologizing this. Um, so Moda Factor says you might as well retopolo. Uh, what is the best way to sample the noisy texture? There's a couple different ways. There's an old, old method uh, you can do. You can you can save an alpha 
you can construct an alpha from the noise on the object, and then you can bring that in as a drag rect. Uh, you can do surface noise that kind of matches that, um, and you can also use transpose lines to sample a, one surface to another. It's been a long time since I've done that. Um, I'll have to see if I remember the steps. Like my E3D days uh, is the last time I did that for my E3D demos. Uh, Indie response says he's working on photo scans. Uh, closed holes feature in ZBrush is cool. Cool, yeah. Um, it's not. I don't do a lot of photo stuff. Like I said, the environment guys in my work. Man, they do a ton of photogrammetry. Me, not so much. I'm more of a more of a dabbler. But uh, yeah, closed holes is a good one. I'm trying to think what else they do uh, for the environment stuff. Maybe we'll do some environment stuff later. Uh, they do some really neat tricks for mostly on the texture side and the tiling texture side, um, but also in cleanup. And uh, if you have like a cliff face or half a rock, you can turn it into a full rock using ZBrush's uh, live Boolean stuff and transferring textures around. They do some really, really neat stuff that I'm not really privy to. I should. It's not like it's rocket science or I, I need to distance myself from that type of work. It's just I, I I don't get to do that type of work, so. My my nine to five doesn't include rocks and it's, it's photogrammetry stuff, unfortunately. But this is fun and uh the so photo scan itself isn't that expensive. Uh, I don't want to quote prices here because I'm probably gonna be wrong, but it's not uh prohibitively expensive, I should say, uh, at least for their regular license. Um, for reality capture, they got a little bit of a different licensing. I I guess depending on how much you photo scan, it'll pay for itself, um, or you can just get it for a couple months, depending on how much, again, you're going to use it. But it gives you really, really good results. I was really happy. And, and good results with me not really paying too much attention. Hmm, this might be an issue. If we dynamesh that at a lower enough resolution, it didn't capture that, but we can always, we can build that bridge back. Uh, I'm gonna go back in here and we will cut that in just a little bit more. Alrighty, and over here, I'm going to extend this hand out. And now we're getting into territory where when we do project those textures back, it may not do the world's best job. But that's okay. Uh, she's got kind of a little creature hand <laughs> going on on the inside here. So we're going to have to, I mean, we don't have to sculpt a perfect hand in there at all. And if it was semi-symmetrical on both sides, I could just duplicate that hand over. Uh, but unfortunately, she's not. So that's going to be a little bit more manual work. Her hand just kind of stops here. So let's go ahead and I got the standard brush here. Again, I don't want to pull it out too much. Uh, I guess I do. I think it was just a blob in there. So we'll just go ahead and give indications of like she has an actual hand in here with some fingers and a thumb and a wrist. Trying to think while I do this if there's any other. Zebra has a lot of different ways to do this, and like I said before, for better or for worse, this is the time when I'm able to stream. Unfortunately, my brain isn't always firing on all of my cylinders just yet. Oh, we'll do we can. So here's this, and then her. This like I guess her pinky and stuff. This doesn't need to go in that far. We'll 
luckily, if that ever happens. Whoops, wrong one. Oh, you know what? When we upgraded Camtasia, <sighs> give me a second. There we go. And I accidentally opened Painter. Okay, so it's going to say, let's resize ZBrush here. It'll give you a little message like, hey, we did crash, but you shouldn't have lost anything. And we didn't. So if you go over here, you can get re your recovered Z tool. And we're back where we started. Now, something, sometimes what I do, preferences, edit, turn off the line, cursor to surface. Sometimes what I'll do when I'm splitting objects off, I'll do a quick save and then I'll just reload that quick save to delete my history. There, you can also go up here to Z plugin if you have the uh, Clean Tool Master installed. If you can get that from Pixelogic's website, then you can go over here and you can delete your undo history and everything. I've found that that makes it slightly less crashy sometimes. Now, I don't know that that had anything at all to do with, let's change that back to smooth stronger here. Um, the undo history causing that crash. I've just noticed that sometimes when I split objects off, that tends to be, that tends to make it a little bit more predictable. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna take this body part of her dress up. Now when I move this, you can use the move brush and it'll make a big uh, loopy move. You can also turn on curve, accu curve, whoops. And that'll turn it, uh, pull out to a point. So I have a version of the move brush with accu curve turned on and then I can just pull this stuff out to a point. And that'll just give me a little bit more of an accurate placement there. I guess I should take her neck area here. Hold down Alt to set that direction and we can just pull her neck down into her body again so that those two things meet up. That's kind of bugging me. Alrighty, so uh, this here, and while we're thinking about it, you know, her arm's going to meet up in here. We'll just dynamesh that back. I can go through here, and I think she probably is going to have, like, these dress ruffles are going to continue around in here. So we can kind of indicate that a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn off our lazy radius again, and crank up our Z intensity just a little bit on our standard brush here. And this is actually part of her arm. We'll dynamesh all that back together. through in here. I'm just going to knock this back. Okay, I think we're ready to do some retopology.
And uh, we're not going to manually retopologize this thing. Didn't lose my bottom poly group, which is good. Let's go look back. Uh, we can do a quick comparison uh, from this one to our original here. I'm going to do a, you know, I'm going to merge all these down. You can do a merge visible, but I'm just going to do a merge down here. Okay, so we got our body here, and then we got her original here. If I turn on solo, we can switch back and forth and see if we did anything uh, really bad. I don't think so. Yeah, not too shabby. Okay, so I think that's going to work. So we have our original here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And now with this one, I want to keep my polygroups for my different objects here. So what I'm going to try and do, let's go back to, let's turn off our line here. Let's do control shift. I'm going to do control shift A. There we go. So we've got her entire arm. I'm going to make this one solid polygroup. And then same thing with this one, control shift A, control W, and then her body, control shift A, control W. So now, oh, and her head, control shift A, control W. I should have, I could have done that while they were still sub tools, but now uh, those are all separate. So the reason I'm doing this is so when I dynamesh this together, I have um, those polygroups available to me still, just in case I need them. I should have cleaned this up too a little bit, maybe. Hold on. All right. Um, let's go, go back to a select rectangle here. So when I dynamesh this together, I can also use those polygroups for my Z remesher, which I think will be good alrighty so we've got that let me think let me think before I commit to this I mean we can always duplicate this off if we need to <laughs> okay so dynamesh here so now if I dynamesh these together it's all going to dynamesh together, but it is going to retain my polygroups. And now we can go through and we can do any little last minute cleanup we want to do between these polygroups. Um, kind of smoother transitions a little bit going with your Damien standard. And maybe sculpt these areas in just a little bit here. These areas look fine, I guess. This can be, that transition can be smoothed out a little bit. And you can always use visibility if you do need to get back in here to these tight areas. Uh, but I think that'll be okay. Okay, so uh, now that we have that, we can now, let's go ahead and duplicate this off one more time. I like to keep duplicates around just in case I need to go back. Uh, so we've got this and we've got all these sweet polygroups. Now, they're dynameshed together, but what we can do now is... Ah, oh, dang it. Do we you lose that uh, polygroup on the bottom? I didn't want to lose that polygroup. Well, we can get that back. So what we can do is we can hold down control. I'm going to go to mask outer. No, mask inner. Actually, we don't even need to do that fancy. We can go to, let's go to mask pin. And under masking, we're going to have auto masking turned on. And we're going to do back face masking on. And if I just go to the side here, it should stop. Cancel. Maybe. Yeah, maybe not. Let's go to mask inner. I'll kind of stop along here, along those borders here. Basically, that's uh, when you hold down control, go to your depth, and uh, if you take your depth mask and you pull this bottom part up, it'll tend to stop at edges. And that'll just give you a little bit of a faster result here for the bottom. Oh, you know what? I lost it when I hit Control W on the body. That would do it. Oops. Oh, well. We'll get it back here real quick. And again, it's the bottom of the object. It's not super important. Let's go ahead and hold down Control Alt and clean that up. And then we'll go back to our mask pin. Uh, we'll go to the top here, see if there's anything else. 
Weird. Nah, that's fine. So we'll go ahead and hit Control W. And now this one, let's make that a little bit more obvious here. There we go. Um, this is a little concerning, but I guess I'm going to ignore that for a bit. Okay, so now that we've got this uh, broken up, we can go ahead and just give it some new topology and some new UVs all within ZBrush. So now that we've got those polygroups on here, you know what? If I do Z-Remesh this, I don't even think I want that bottom polygroup here. I'm just going to delete that. So I'm going to go in there, Geometry Modified Topology, Delete Hidden. And now let's go to our... I'm just going to grab the Z plugin folder menu over here, and we're going to go to, uh, and I'm not going to go over there yet, dummy. Uh, so we wait, we duplicated this off, right? We got original here, we can project back to, perfect. I'm going to go down here to geometry, Z remesher, and again, we have our polygroups here. It's not symmetrical, don't turn on X. And then uh, adaptive size, I'm going to drop that down just a bit. Uh, the lower the adaptive size, the more it's going to give you perfect quads and maintain your poly count, count number a little bit more accurately. The more you crank this up, the more it's going to look at your edge flow and put in um, edges in there. Uh, I think this will work fine. We do want to, we don't need to keep groups. Let me think. Because I want those poly groups for when I go to UV but I don't necessarily need to keep groups for my Z remesher. I mean, I guess we can. Uh, we'll keep smooth groups up at, uh, at one, and then we'll just hit Z remesh with a target polygon count. Let's crank that back up like 30 or something. And we'll let that spin. Um, you can also clean history and loading. You have a toggle on the purposes. Yes, so that's another thing too, to get rid of your history. And that's why when I do my quick save, when I quick save and then I reload my quick save, it cleans my history on reload. So it kind of gets rid of that, which, um, you know, if you use your history a lot, that might not be such a good deal, but I don't really, so. Cool. Uh, mask bias by MAH. Motor Factor says it's a good one. Go check that out. Almost done. Now, the cool thing is um, I can just re-Z remesh this object if I didn't get the results I wanted. Um, I think the, the, the results are fine, honestly. I think I'll actually just end up using this if you needed to. Um, let's go ahead and we'll turn on our one mesh. We got these two meshes showing our original high risk source and then our new one. Um, but I can still go into solo mode. And while I'm in solo mode, I can go in here to project and I can project my detail back if I need to. If you want to go even lower, you can go in here. Uh, we'll go like zero mesh half, and you can just zero mesh your pre zero meshed object, and it'll go a lot faster. Let's see, let's see. And you don't have to go half, you can go from like 30,000 to say like 20 if you wanted to. But zero meshing from your previously zero meshed object is probably the way to go, it'll go a lot faster. And I think our groups look pretty good. Uh, let's see if we do, let's to give it a test. So, what we can do is you can go project all. And then we can hit Control D to subdivide, project all, Control D to subdivide, project all, Control D to subdivide, project all. So now we're projecting, so now we're at 985,000 active points, and then this one original was 958,000. So I think it did a pretty good representation of the geo. I mean, we could subdivide one more time, but I, th I think that'll be fine. I don't know, we'll play around with that. Um, another thing we can do and we could even just manually go through and project manually. Uh, maybe we'll do that. Anyway, uh, we've got this thing here and we've got our, we have subdivision history now. So we have our low res mesh and then we have a high res mesh with that, but we don't have any UVs. Uh, the good news is we do have poly groups that we maintained with our friendly keep groups here. And let's go ahead, let's do uncrease all just in case. I don't think these things would be creased. Uh, under your geometry crease menu, yeah, they're not, okay. Um, so because we have polygroups and you could you could always recreate those polygroups just by masking or visibility and uh, recreating them. I just, since I already had those polygroups already, I didn't want to have to do that. And then Z plugin, we can go over here to UV master. Stop alarming me about stuff, stupid phone. Uh, and we're not doing symmetry. We are doing polygroups. You can enable control painting. Um, oh wait, 
Duh, hold on. Uh, before you start doing all this, go to work on clone. There we go. So now uh, we do have our polygroups. So again, we're not in symmetry. We're using polygroups. Uh, you can enable control painting. You can attract manually where you want that to. You can attract from ambient, ambient occlusion if you want to. And then you can go to unwrap. And then I go ahead and unwrap your low res. And then we can go to flatten. And we can go ahead and modify these UVs however we want. Uh, for instance, you might want to um, move some of this stuff around. Uh, if you if you hold down control and tap, you can use your gizmo to move these things around here. Like so. If you wanted to. I mean, I guess getting these things to fit here. Um, if you use the transpose line, I think, let's let's test this out. So if we go out of trans, if you've got a gizmo, go gizmo mode and go into transpose mode, and then you go up here to your brush menu, and you say modifiers, uh, no, auto mask. That's what polygroups up to 100, and then you drag out on one, it'll go ahead and use mask by polygroups. I don't think that works with the gizmo, so if we turn this gizmo on, and then we say alt drag on this one and start moving stuff around, it'll move everything. So you can use that. Alternatively, again, you can just hold down control, tap control, and just move the stuff around. If you had any unimportant stuff that you really didn't care about, um, how, you know what, it did a pretty damn good job of packing. I'm having a hard time. I thought I was like, oh, I can, I'll repack these, and now it's like, well, maybe you won't. And because this is just geometry, I mean, it is, it's UVs, but it's also, um, you can also treat it as geometry within ZBrush. You can go through here and you can, like, do a, you know, you can enlarge, you know, scale or whatever you want to do to these. And you can also go through here and go to, say, masking. You can mask by your border and you can grow that mask. You can invert that mask or you can go through here and now you can go through your deformations and you can smooth and polish and relax and go through here and do anything you want to to your UVs. Uh, but I'm not going to. So anyway, that one looks fine. Let's go over here to our V plugin, uh, UV master. So we can go to unflatten. And now we've got our UVs back. We're going to go to, uh, we don't got our UVs back. They're just not flattened out. Then we're going to go to copy UVs. And we can go back to our original here. And this is the one with all our subdivision history. And now we can go to paste UVs. And if we want to check those, we can go down here to our texture map, create, new from UV map, or UV check, or any of those. And uh, now you can see we've got our UVs on our object. Yay. So turn our texture off. And there we go. We have our cleaned up object here. See so Zeri mesh, she has new UVs. And I think we're ready. So let's, let's talk about one more thing here. So we're going to go to matcap here, turn off poly paint. So we can go all the way back up. So this one, we don't really need. And then this one, we don't really need. And then this one, we don't really need. So go back through here. This is our original, original mesh here. So if we go between here, you're going to see here's uh, what we cleaned up. And then here's, uh, you know, we, we, it's, it's really just noise. I don't know that I need any of this stuff back. If you feel you did, you can go through here. You can have one selected and one showing, and you can go here to B. You can do you can do another project, um, but you'd want to be careful because you would be projecting back to garbage that you don't want. So if you wanted to, you could go in here manually B Z P. And you can use the project brush. Turn off RGB, and now you can go through here. And uh, if you want to play it safe, now that we're we've we're not doing anything extra with this. We're not dynamizing or anything. We can go down here to, again, our morph target, store morph target. Now we can go through here and again, B, Z, P, and we can hold down alt to pull up through the surface and let go of alt to push down to the surface. And then if we go into solo mode here, you see we're picking up extra detail. You can even subdivide this one more time. Uh, now we're at almost 4 million. So now when we go through here and project this detail back, um, you're getting that detail again. I don't know that I need all of that detail. I think I'm probably going to skip this step. Uh, but if you turns out that you want to clean this up or you went into an area you didn't like, uh, well, we subdivided. So let me undo that. You're going to want to 
store your morph target at whatever density you're working at here. So if you go through here and now you go to B M O B M O morph target, we can uh, use our morph target to morph back to our original state. So you don't really need to worry about losing anything. But honestly, I think we're in good shape. I'm not going to worry too much about that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to delete morph target. I got our object here. Um, yes, I know. Okay, I think we're good. So let's go ahead and take this one here and we're going to export this. Now before I export this, you can go to export here and you can turn off group. Uh, when this is enabled, uh, when the OBJ format is selected, uh, your poly groups will be separate. Um, another thing you do is you just duplicate this thing off and hit Control W, make it all one poly group, and then when you go to export, it won't do that. So we'll go here to our resurf folder. This is a girl statue RC full, which we have saved here. I think we're in good shape, so I'm just going to save over that. And now we can reproject those textures back in Reality Capture. Um, her left hand is up, and then her her other her right hand is down and then her left hand is like cupping her chin so yeah this one over here is like turned around so there's a wrist and then there's a top of her hand and then this one is up like so uh i'll go ahead and skip the reality capture part because that doesn't have too much to do with zbrush so um no this isn't my personal channel if you did uh so johnny says uh tell me if this is your profession or personal channel. This is my, I, I stream on Pixelogic's channel on Tuesday mornings. My personal channel is www.twitch.tv forward slash pavmike. You can hit me up there on Thursdays. I actually missed last Thursday, I think. Uh, I don't know. Streaming's hard. In the morning, oh, it's the worst. Just kidding. It's not that bad, but some days I'm feeling it more than others. Anyway, we got this thing cleaned up. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do a save as and RC statue. There's our comparison. And we'll go ahead and call this um, All right. I think that'll work. All right. What else you guys want to do? I can probably go for another Ooh, do I want to I want to jog today? That would be that would be great. I've been eating a lot of frozen pizzas. All right, let's wait for that to save. Okay, it's already saved here. Um, let's go ahead. You can do a preferences initialize if you want. I go ahead and clear out ZBrush, or you can just restart it. Let's go ahead and just do that. I also need to move some stuff around. Give me a second. It moves some of my ABC. Where did it put? Um, TechSmith, jeez, QRS. Oh, it's already pinned. You just moved it. It's killing me. Windows 10. Assume that's a culprit. There we go. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, if you missed that, I was on, uh, so, uh, Johnny brings up the fact that I did, you know what, now that you mentioned that, let's do that. I totally forgot we even did that. So, on AMD's channel, I streamed, and uh, we got our streaming here, ZBrush Live, I, we got Turtle Power, I was doing some Ninja Turtle stuff, where did I put it? I guess it would be under Mario World, huh? Uh, Bowser Kids, so if we walk through here, we got our Bowser Jr. block out. And we went through, and we kind of just used primitives to make his shapes here. And then for the next one, we did the Browser Junior Refine. And then we went through and just kind of refined the shapes that we had. And then we went through, and we got the rebuild. And this is where we started um, kind of rebuilding his mesh using polygroups uh, and getting these things nice and sculptable. So if we want to, we can go ahead. Let me see. So another thing I like to use is Quadro. That's a reference viewer program. And what I can do is I can load up Quadro and then I can just pull up the reference here. Let's see. Open recent Bowser Jr. reference. Yes. 
There we go. So now I've got, um, let me see if I can do this really quick. Alt tab. There we go. So you see all that reference I pulled up and just kind of around my screen so I can see it while I work. And now, of course, it's over the Twitch. Let me move this down. Hey, Gary, thanks for showing up. Um, art critiques. Uh, we could do art critiques sometime. What would I be critiquing? Let's see. Preferences. Edit. Turn off. I always like to turn off a line cursor to service. Um, I suppose I could make a macro for that so I didn't have to do it every time. So now I'm just going to kind of go through here. We can also use, again, our move accu. We'll kind of pull these things down to corners here. And then we can use smooth. I'm going to keep smooth. That's, you know, I like smooth stronger. And then dropping the Z intensity down. This gives me a little bit more range. There we go. So going through here. And again, most of this stuff was just done with primitives. What's going on with my clay brush? Uh, we got his teeth kind of sticking out here, and I guess they do, let's see, these, they do shift D, D, okay, that just turns on dynamic, and then turns it back off, and we can do the same thing for this, we can just hit D, and that'll turn on dynamic subdivisions, if we want to, we can increase the polygroups, but I think this will be fine, um, he does have, if I do shift D here, he does have like a little lip on the inside of his mouth here, where his tongue goes, I suppose we could build that in, and he did so divide it all the way up. You know what? I'm just going to go to delete higher. And let's say I'm going to hold down control shift. We're going to go to select lasso. And I'm going to grab this poly loop here. And then I'm going to do invert that. I'm trying to think the best way to do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's do, um, I guess I'll polygroup that. What I'm really looking for is this piece in here. So I'm going to isolate these purple ones. I'm just going to do an auto groups. And now we've got this interior here. And now I can take this interior one, do control shift X to expand. Okay, and make that a polygroup. So now that I have those polygrouped in here, I can do a Q mesh or let's do an extrude polygroup all. And I can just pull these things down and in. Let's go ahead and flip our vertices here. It's doing something a little bit weird here. You know what? Instead of doing that, let's extrude these up. And then I can take this one. And I'm just holding down. Uh, I'm actually, I'm not extruding anymore. I extruded once, but now what I'm going to do is I'm starting this and holding down shift. And that's just pulling along the surface normals there. So that's going to give me that little lip on the inside of his mouth there. And then we can go ahead. Uh, we can shrink this up a little bit if we want to. We can go into our visibility here. And we can go in here with our pinch brush. And we can just kind of pinch those things together a little bit more. There we go. And then his tongue kind of sits up in there. Which is actually his neck. So let's go ahead and first of all, let's get his neck out of his mouth. So let's go through here and let's we'll clip that out. And I guess he his you know also alternatively we can just uh, isolate this one, mask that back, and then we can just use our gizmo to kind of pull the back of his mouth back up a little bit, and then also shrink it down using scale here. So it's not so obtrusive back in there. Now his head here is also poking through his mouth. So that we can go ahead and clip back for sure. All right. And then his neck here, I'm just going to move that back down in there. Okay. So now what if we want to put a tongue in there, I just go to my primitives here. We'll just drag in a sphere and we'll go ahead and split mass points. And now we can go ahead and scale that down non-uniformly, pop it in there and it goes good and scale this out. Like I mentioned before, if you wanted to, you can go through here. Once you've done that, you just do a quick save here. 
hit 9, and then grab your um, quick save, and that last quick save in here. Also, if you want to clean out these recovered files, uh, you're going to notice when you're in here, if you uh, if you click on any of these, it's going to say this is where the folder is. You can click go to folder. Uh, that'll take your this to that folder. Um, but if you want to delete those, you're going to want to go to your ZBrush data folder here, users public documents ZBrush data, Z uh, quick save, and then all these recovered files in here, you can just delete them. And now when you hit comma key, your uh, it'll be a little bit more cleaned out. So FYI. Um, okay, so um, why is it good to turn off the Align Cursor service? Uh, it's not necessarily good, it's just a habit. I'm an old, old ZBrush user. So what happens is, when you have preferences, Align Cursor to Surface on, it goes through there and it kind of flips this thing around. So it's like, oh, what surface am I on? This one or this one or this one or this one? And it's fine if I'm using Z Modeler, um, but it's really just the more annoying to me when I'm doing sculpting stuff. You know, I don't need it. I don't need it to tell me the surface direction of a model while I work. That's not information I need. So uh, it doesn't affect the brush at all, which is good. Um, but it just gets rid of that annoying flip flopping that it does. I find it annoying. You may not. Uh, okay. So again, eventually, you know, we did resurface this, and I guess we can't keep this all separate because I was going to say we could dynamesh this together into one solid mesh. But it looks like in most of my reference, it's got a. He has a very divided uh, line around his face there. So I guess we'll keep those separate. Even these things here. Now these things, interestingly enough, so we've got all of his spikes. Well, let's see. I guess we can merge all these things down. Should we merge them all down? Yeah, let's merge them all down. So I'm going to hold down Shift and shoot all these spikes at the top. And then I'm going to hit uh, my hotkey for merge, which is under subtool merge. And we'll also turn off our poly groups here, or our poly paint. And now uh, these are all uh, together and they are mirrored and well to the same on the both sides. And we have X symmetry turned on. So what I'm noticing here is that these, according to my reference, these edges here are a little bit harsh on these disks. So we can go ahead and change that. Um, if I was working real smart, I would have used nano mesh for these disks. I'm going to go ahead and do control shift A and then split hidden. So now these are their own subtool here. And again, just play it safe. Now, when we do a quick save, that's basically doing the same thing as a save project, which means um, all this extraneous tools we have in here that we don't really need anymore, we can just go ahead and just hit delete all. And then delete all. So that when every time we do a quick save, it doesn't take that long. Um, so when I do shift D, that's going to turn off our dynamic subdivisions here. And in order to get these to be rounded out a little bit more, let's see if I can go through here. Let's go insert single edge loop. So if I delete this one, oh, you know what? I think I inserted one accidentally. So let's hold on alt and that'll kind of round that out a bit more. Also looks like maybe I need to, so we'll keep that one and let's get rid of this one. Do we need to get rid of both of them? Yeah, you know what? I think we need to get rid of both of them. So I guess we're just rounding that shape out a little bit more. And so let's go through here and just hold down Alt. And we'll get rid of this top one here and this side one. I'm going to keep this one creased down here to kind of maintain that edge. And that one should be, yeah. Now this one uh, isn't pushed in around this one here. So let's go ahead and fix that. We can go ahead and let's say, hold on alt and eh, it's gonna be a pain, isn't it? Let's do, let's make our brush size really small and we'll hold down alt and we'll paint that. And now we can go through here. We can do like another inset uh, polygroup all. We can just inset that down. Now of course we're gonna do an inset region. And then once we do that, we can do a Q mesh polygroup all, and we can just hold down shift and pull that back in. And we do a crease by polygroup here. Now when we hit dynamic, 
Um, let's do a crease by poly group and a crease tolerance here so that now hopefully this thing will kind of fit within that little spot there, but we also need to round this thing out a little bit more. So what I can also do is we can do a slide edge loop complete. We can slide this in a little bit and I'm going to Q mesh this back in so we actually get an edge loop. So now what I can do is I can go through here and we can do insert single edge loop and we can get rid of that one. And we can actually just bevel this one out here. We can do a bevel edge loop complete, maybe round that off. Now if we do a crease poly group now and a crease here uh, and we hit D, that's going to crease these up here. I can, I can just go back through really quickly and do a crease edge loop complete, hold down alt and get rid of those creases here and here. And then I'll round that out and these ones will fit. Let's go ahead and go to solo. Let's go ahead and crease these ones as well. Oh, you know what I did? I didn't do any real fancy work on these things. So let's do shift D. There's our dynamic. Uh, if I go into solo mode here, I think I just took a Uh, sphere and pulled it out. So you know what? Let's go ahead and do let's do a manual crease edge loop complete here. And I'm gonna hold down Alt and tap here. And now I can scale these things down. Like so and we can just use we can use transpose or gizmo, sorry. And just move these things around a little bit. Alternatively, we can also scale these things up. Of course, since they're all one mat, one uh, subtool now, I'm probably going to want to, oops, unmask these things. And also turn on LSIM, and then I go ahead and scale locally, like so. Okay. Uh, good enough. Now these things are looking pretty gross, but those are just dynameshed here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to inflate these up a little bit, and I'm going to use Z remesh around these. Uh, if we want to, it's always maybe a good idea to go ahead and duplicate off before you use Z remesh. I'm going to turn off dynamesh, do Z remesher, and let's go ahead and do same resolution, adapt to size down a bit, and we'll go into solo mode. Let's do half. We don't need that much. And let's also project back. So I'm going to turn off everything except for these last two. If we do uh, project all, which we talked about earlier, Z remesh half. Okay, I think that's a good. That's a good resolution. So we don't need our original dynamesh anymore. We can go ahead and delete that. And the reason I did that Z remesh here is just so we get a little bit of a nicer result when we dynamically subdivide this. To turn everything back on, um, get slightly nicer eyebrows, and we can even go through here with our Damien standard maybe and let's do shift D here. So as we're subdividing these up, we can go through here and we can start adding in a little bit more detail along here. Go back in here and smooth. And you can use your H polish and your trim dynamic if you want to while you're pulling out these shapes. Let's go in here with our clay brush here. And I'm also going to go in here and polish that back down just a little bit. You can also divide this up into poly groups and then do a polish by features or a polish by groups if you want to. Might net you some good results, but uh, I think I'll just go in here with H polish really quick and start delineating his form just a little bit. Now, of course, you could have done this on the Dynamesh that we had. I probably would have raised the resolution a little bit. Um, but there's nothing wrong with Z remeshing, just takes a second. And you can always re Z remesh if you want to. Not a big deal. And let's pull this out to a really sharp corner. So again, with our move accu that we talked about earlier, we can just pull that out to a point.
There we go. Fancy eyebrows. Let's go ahead and rotate these back just a bit so they're a little more flush with his head. And, you know, speaking of the Twitch channels here, if you go to, uh, obviously the Twitch channel you're on right now, if you go to, let me see, streaming. Again, haven't been on in a while, uh, but we, we've sculpted a bunch of stuff over the years we've been streaming. I think it is years now. So let me link, this is the Pavlovich Workshop channel. Of course, if you go to the Pixelogic channel here, go ahead and stop this video from playing. There's a lot of talented people doing live streaming, so you can check out these people's channel, and they do all sorts of really cool stuff in there. So, um, let me move this back up so I don't have to look down. Cool. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Sorry if I missed any questions. I've been kind of just doing some weird stuff. Um, cool. Um, as far as uh, Will 3D uh, critique on one of the art station sculpts, um, what I prefer to do is do... Oh, did I keep this original Dynamesh around for some reason? Uh, what I prefer to do is actually do... Let's go ahead and delete that. Um, critiques in ZBrush. Like, um, you know, it's hard for me... I mean, I can critique a model and an image and stuff, but it's a lot easier for me to go around <clears throat> your model and kind of critique it like that. Um, I'm not sure how I'd set that up. But uh, that would that's my always my preferred method. It's just easier to go around and kind of just re-sculpt on something and explain in 3D stuff than kind of do it esoterically. Um, I'll probably set up maybe one day a week where I can go through and just do sculpt critiques. That would probably be a good use of time. That seems like a lot of fun, especially when I don't have anything necessarily planned. Uh, see if I missed anything really quick. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What's the difference between topology brush and topology using Z spheres? Uh, so with Z spheres, you can just retopologize arbitrarily. You can go through and you can move Z spheres around. So if we wanted to, we could append. Let me just do this real quick. Append Z sphere, and then we go down here. We select the Z sphere. Um, go into transparency mode. We can hit X. We can scale this in there, and then we can go in here. Density down. Edit topology. Go to matte cap pearl, go to a dark gray, turn on transparency. So we've got the Z-sphere hidden in there, and now we can go through here and just start retopologizing re our mesh. Um, now, it there's two ways to do this. You can do project retopology, which is uh, you append in your meshes and all that stuff. Don't worry about that. Uh, we're doing the append method, and whatever is visible on your screen, it will go ahead and snap to. So you can actually, in the middle of this, turn off a subtool, and it will not snap to that anymore. Uh, the cool method about this one, though, is I can go through here and I can just pick points and then I can add more points and then I can go across here and I can add points Oops. like so and I can hold down alt and I can delete points if I want to and then I can always hit A to go in here and look at my topology and I can add um, also skin thickness if I want to um, so it's a pretty cool method for just doing retopology work um, you can also combine that with Ziri Mesher so if I wanted to I could go in here to my delete topology uh, we can take this one for example oops if we take this one and we clone this off and then we go back down to our Z sphere here and we're like you know what I want to clean up this topology here so you can go through here and then you can do uh, the topology menu you can go um, select topology and then you can select that clone topology and then you can go to uh, edit topology and now you can go through here and you can edit this topology so if you want to like go through here and be like I don't like these points here you can go through here and now you can just redraw these points or do whatever you want to do um, and then of course when I hit A you're gonna get your adaptive skin and that's what your retopologizing is gonna look like now alternatively let me delete that z-sphere here you can go through here with your topology brush. You're gonna first of all, you're gonna want to make sure you're on a subtool that doesn't have subdivision history. It's not gonna let you do it. And then you can go to BTO. And now with this one, you can just quickly drag these curves out. And then as you drag across here, you're gonna start getting topology. And then you can hold on Alt 
and that'll kind of clean this up and then he can hold down alt and then get rid of some of these and then he can continue to draw these or you can continue to draw these up here and then draw across and anything that's visible again it's going to stick to and now when I just tap with my brush it's going to give me topology with skin thickness uh, if you bring your mesh all the way down to one and then tap that'll just give you um, just a one depth no skin thickness uh, so one's pretty fast one takes a little bit of setup as far as appending and going into edit topology and manually doing things um, I prefer z-sphere topology unless I want to do something really quickly like uh, if I, I wouldn't retopologize this some people would I'm not saying that you shouldn't I'm just saying I can't um, but if I'm just doing really quick stuff like straps is usually what I'll use topology brush for so if I wanted to like give him a backpack let's go ahead and get rid of this bib real quick so let's say uh, this is actually a backpack on him I'd go in here to the beat topology brush here and I'd go here um, also you're probably gonna want to make your topology brush the bigger you make your topology brush the less um, point you're gonna have in your curve and that sometimes actually makes it a little bit easier so now we can go through here and then back around here oops you know what also let's do this if we want to see something a little bit better get rid of stuff makes it a little bit easier so now we can do our topology brush here and our topology brush here and then I can just go across here 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 Womp, wham, 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 and tap off and then split mass points and then we can go through here we can do like a crease crease polygroup dynamic crease level of three smooth set of a four and now we have nice little backpack let's do a crease level of two there we go so now we've got like a little backpack mesh here uh, and of course because we have let's go ahead and go to the so we can see it um, it's just geometry so I'm doing our dynamic subdivision here I can go through here we can do like an inset or an insert edge loop here and here and then we can like poly group these poly loops here and then we can like Q mesh these up here so you can kind of start getting a little bit more detail we can also do another crease poly group here let's do a crease level of one that kind of stuff um, I think there was something else I was going to mention with topology oh yeah you can also just do <clears throat> excuse me brush curve BC you can do curve snaps snap snap strap and then you can just go through here and put on a snap strap make that a little bit bigger and if it's not thick enough you can change your Z intensity and thicken it up quite a bit if that's not thick enough you can go in here to your modifiers and say strength multiplier and really crank it up but it's kind of up to you or if you want to go in here to like brush insert um, make this into like a bike chain you can do that make it bigger whatever you want a lot of options again so I like ZBrush let's go ahead and do a quick save here oh cool hey Thunder Bunny thanks for showing up again sorry if I'm getting kind of behind here now um, cool uh, da, da, da. it's better to use tablet or mouse for ZBrush uh, I rarely use a mouse for ZBrush some sometimes I'll use a mouse for very specific uh, reasons here let's go ahead and just do an auto groups on this one and then a mirror and weld and then I'm just going to if you make your move brush size down really small and then you do auto mask by polygroups uh, then you can just go through here and you can move individually piece by piece or you can make your brush size really big and kind of finesse some of these I don't know why these got so out of whack I must have accidentally oh you know what when I was moving these things around I bet that's what did it always be careful when you're working on one sub tool for all your pieces that's why I usually I don't pay that much attention so I like to have everything split off into its own sub tools like just alt tap it and then just use those so
Um, yeah, so I definitely use a tablet most for most of what I do. In fact, I use a tablet for almost every program I use now. Maya, I use a tablet just a little bit faster for me to get around. Um, where to find a description of each brush in ZBrush? Yeah, I would. I agree with Pro. Probably the Pictolytic site. Um, and also, just kind of playing around with them too. I mean, it's going to take you a lot of time. Also, don't forget you have a ton of brushes up here. If you hit the comma key, um, there's a lot of brushes hidden out in here that are really cool. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do maybe I'll do a video when I get some time, where I go through every single brush and ZBrush and post it on my YouTube channel. Um, cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool, cool. All right. I, th I think I'm caught up. If I miss something, forgive me. Oh, the slider. Are you talking about the interface here? Um, if you're on a 4K monitor, I know there's some tricks. I'm not on a 4K monitor. I am on a, let's see, YouTube. You go to my YouTube and you go to my hardware section. This is what I'm on right now. Um, so they're not 4K, but they are 34 inch monitors here, kind of stacked. Um, but they're not 4K resolution. And I am actually only working, if you notice, I'm only working on this little section right here. I've got my chat window up here. I got my reference all around me. So I tend to work actually in a pretty small area. I don't need like a wall sized version of ZBrush because really I'm only focused on what's and also, it's a lot of resources to uh, spend on areas I'm not necessarily putting my eyeballs. So I tend to actually work small in ZBrush and just kind of focus on what's on my screen in the middle here, you know. And I don't need 34 inches of ZBrush. I don't. I've, I've found, and it gives me just it just kind of frees up real estate for me. Go ahead and jiggle this around a little bit to use for like reference and stuff. Okay. Um, what else, what else, what else? So on the body here, go ahead and move this down real quick. Okay, uh, let's see. So this we could do in Marvelous Designer as well. It's something this simple, you probably don't need to. I think we just did a quick sculpt and then Z remeshed and masked it and then called it a day. You just do some lazy mouse strokes on that. But again, if you want to hide something, I just alt tap it and then just tap it over here on the nameplate. That way I don't have to go through here and hunt and peck uh, for where these things are in space. I can just kind of find them in my, it's kind of a cool look. I like that character even more actually. Um, what else we need to do? What else we need to do real quick? Let's go, let's refine this body a little bit. So we have his body here, and we have indications of where his little turtle belly shell is, but those look like little separate pieces here. Oh, it also looks like I forgot his little wrist guards. You know what? Let's add those real quick. So those are going to go around his skin as a separate piece. He has very round body parts here. So these all need to be like more cylindrical, I'm thinking. So what we could do, I'm just going to go in here, we're going to grab a cylinder, let's grab a cylinder 12. I'm going to go ahead and split unmasked points here, I'll drop it below, and then we can just alt tap those and put them in there. And then we can just position these here, and these fit right above his wrists. Let's just do this real quick. So it almost goes up because his arms are so stumpy. They kind of, again, we have Elsim turned on, because if you have Elsim turned on, they'll just scale along their uniform axis. If you turn that off, it's going to scale towards the world axis there. Let's turn on Elsim. There are some instances where that could cause you some problems, uh, but I'll talk about those if they come up. Just be aware that that's what it does, just in case. All righty. Now, if we have these positioned here, we don't have a hole in the middle. We can remedy that really quickly. And you know what? I'm gonna man I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat this a little bit. I'm just gonna manually go in here and just move this stuff around. I know it's not gonna be a perfect cylinder, but you know what? Sometimes you gotta make do. 
is also going to be a nightmare for the animators, I think. If they're going to be doing poses, this is going to interpenetrate really badly. Uh, oh, and that would probably be why on these 3D versions, they're a lot smaller. They're like little wrist things. On some of them, though, they're pretty thick. I'm going to go ahead and make these a little bit smaller. Give the, animator, give the animators a break, modelers, when you can, if you think about it. They will thank you. Alrighty, so, we got little wrist guards here, but they don't have holes in them, so how do you want to make these holes? Uh, a lot of different ways to do that. One way would probably be to go through here. Let's go with our Z. This is why I talk fast, because this stuff is so boring. It's not boring, but it's like I've talked about this stuff so much that it just becomes like, well, okay, here we go again. Hover over an edge, poly group, poly loop. And then let's go ahead and do an insert single edge loops. So we have something to grab in here. Hold down control shift, isolate that, delete hidden, and then Q mesh polygroup all and just pull this in. Now it's going to flip your vertices. So you're going to want to flip that. That's underneath your uh, display properties. Double and flip. You can turn double on. I usually I like to keep double off. So anyway, and now if you want to make these thicker, you can just go inside here after solo. And then again, Q mesh polygroup all. And then you can Q mesh in, it's going to add an edge loop, or you can start Q meshing, hold on shift, and that'll pull it in. Now you can do a crease by polygroup, crease PG, it's under your crease menu, and then you can go hit D for dynamic, it's under geometry menu, and then you can go to your crease level, it's under your crease menu. So you see why I talk fast, because if I was to talk slow, all that information, um, I wouldn't get anything done. I would bore the hell out of myself. Uh, let's go crease level of two, smooth subset of three. I think that'll work. There's his little, I guess they're like, <laughs> kind of make them look a little punk rock, I guess. All right. Uh, we were talking about his turtle belly here. So we've got this here. Uh, one thing we can do is we can split this off. We can extract this off. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate his body here. And I'm going to mask this area. Let's go turn off line. I'm going to panel loops this stuff. So I already have indications of what this geo needs to be. But what I can do is I can hold down control alt and isolate this area here. Hit control W. And then we can go ahead and do a delete hidden. So now we just have his little turtle belly here. And we can clean this up a little bit more. Hold down control shift. Go to lasso and delete hidden. There we go. Now, uh, let's go through here, and I'm going to hold down Control Shift, go to Slice Curve. And we'll just pull through here. And again, just tapping Alt once will... Give you that nice bend in there. Now, this isn't going to be a symmetrical operation, but that's okay, because all we got to do is a Geometry Modify Topology Mirror and Weld. Again right there on my custom menu. You can go hunt it down in here. I don't feel like losing my mind today. So, oh boy, modify topology somewhere in there. Go find it. So now we have these split up. So now what we can do is we can, even just with this, we can go through here and it should do a fairly decent job of doing like a edge loop. And then you can do panel loops. Let's grab that thickness and pull that up a little bit. So now when you do a panel loop, so it'll go ahead and do that. And if we have polish turned on, let's crank that polish up. You can go ahead and start polishing these things. Now, we can clean this up a little bit, I think. Let's go ahead and, number one, these edges are a little bit jaggy. So if I'm going to Z-remesh these things, which I am going to do, I want to clean these up a little bit. So one way to do that is we can go down here to masking. We can mask border. We can control tap to invert that mask border. And then you can go to your deformations and... Polish by features. Uh, let's not do polish. Let's just do polish by feet. Or don't do a polish by features. Just do a polish. Now I kind of clean those corners up here. And now let's do just tap polish by features a couple times, and then I kind of smooth out the in the uh, the areas between them. And now if we turn line back on, let's go to our Z remesher. We'll keep groups on. I'm going to keep smooth groups up as well. Adaptive size, we can turn down to zero, I think. And then we'll just do half. And we'll zero mesh this. Now we have X turned on, so it is doing it symmetrically. So I'm just going to keep hitting zero mesh half until we get to a resolution I like. I think that'll work. And now at this point, we can do panel loops again. It'll probably give us a little bit of a cleaner result. There we go. Um, 
we can do panel loops or we can just manually go through here and extrude these things which I think is what I'm going to do because these all look like they're kind of separate pieces here so let's see if I missed anything got about 15 minutes left oh man <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I think soon I may be streaming a lot more. So be careful what you wish for. But we'll see how that goes. <laughs> hey, Babu, thanks for showing up. Um, yeah, and I, you know, the good news is even if I do go fast, you can always pause the video and go back and rewind. Also on YouTube, remember, you can go into that little gear and you can actually slow me down. Um, but again, the reason I go fast is because some of the, ex you know, especially if you've watched a lot of my videos, you're going to, you know, if you know exactly where closed holes is and mirrored weld is and mirrored weld. If I actually went through here and found everything real time and talk like this while I did it so we can go, okay, first what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your deformation menu. And in the deformation menu, you're going to want to go to mirror across the x-axis. So you hit mirror, and then you want to go to geometry. Now, if you hold down shift, you can actually open up several menus at a time, so you can keep two menus open. Under geometry, you're going to want to go to, see, I'm even going a little bit fast. Slow down, Mike. Under geometry, go down here to the modify topology menu and tap that and then what we can do is we can go and we can find mirror and weld now mirror and weld you're going to want to do that across the x-axis so we're going to hit mirror and weld and then i'll make both sides the same now we have symmetry turned on that's under your transform menu transform activate symmetry x you can toggle it on and off in here or you can tap the x key on your keyboard yeah i would lose my mind if i had to do that but some people are better at that than i am and I would definitely seek them out. So we've already got this kind of split up here. I might have some issues with these corners here, but what I can do is you can go through here. This is a single-sided mesh. Do I want to cap this? Or do I want to separate these out? Hmm. Let's think about this. Okay, let's, let's try this. Let's do a panel loops. Let's play with panel loops a little bit more. Geometry edge loop, panel loops, and that's giving me tight corners on here. I'm going to drop these loops down to like two. That's going to simplify those loops out. And that polish by is doing a polish by feature, which is okay. But now if I hit D, I'll go ahead and soften those up. So yeah, let's go ahead and stick with panel loops and we can go ahead and clean these things up. These edges, these corners over here aren't quite doing it for me, but we again, we can clean that up. We can get rid of some of those. Or in fact, you know what we could do? Before we do that, let's, let's help this out a little bit. I'm going to go to Z model. I'm going to hover over a face and then I'm going to hit the space bar and then I'm going to go to Z modeler polygon actions, choose delete a single poly under the target and then tap and then go down here and tap again. And now if you move these things out, we can kind of get the shape. So now that we have that, we can go into our zero mesher here and we can do zero mesher, same, keep groups. And that'll just kind of round those corners out, which I think is what I want. Yeah, and then we'll hit panel loops again. And then when we hit D, there we go. Uh, we do have double turned on. We don't have a pen or anything. So it's gonna do a double-sided panel loop and these are all separate objects, which is pretty much what I wanted. So now we have his little turtle belly, and we have X turned on. So now we can go through here. We can move this all back, and we can round this out if we want to. And on his body here, we don't need that turtle shell detail anymore. So as I push these things back, oh, another thing I should have mentioned, you know what, let's talk about it since I have undo history here. Let's go into solo mode here. So you're gonna see where this is on his body is kind of where I want it to project out to. So instead of going in here to our panel loops here, and you're gonna see the elevation at 100, you're gonna see those panel loops like pop out. If you go to elevation of zero, they're gonna pop out. I think it's gonna do like a midline, and then you've got an elevation of negative 100, it's going to panel loops back so that it stops at this top point here. So now I don't have to move them back out as much. In fact, let's just go ahead and do a quick deformation inflate. It's in your deformation menu. 
simply scroll down, click over here, and pull, and you will go down to the deformation menu, which you can then open by clicking on it. Ah! So, anyway, go to your deformation menu, go to inflate, and now you can just go in here with your move brush. Like so. And also in here, like I said in the body, we don't need this information anymore. So I'm just going here to smooth stronger. And we will smooth that out. And you can also, you know, mask that and pull that in if you want to. But now these little turtle belly things are on there. And it's much nicer to have real geometry because you can always fill a material later and you can go through here and make these shapes really nicely as opposed to sculpting everything. Um, even if you wanted it to be one solid piece eventually, I would still use this method just to get nice clean results and then you can dynamesh this back at a higher resolution. My personal opinion. <gasps> um, what else? <laughs> cool. Um, old hard surface helmet concept thing. Yeah, so that's on my YouTube channel too. And like you said, that is pretty dated. Um, I am going to have some new stuff. There's some really cool stuff I'm learning and then applying at work. So hopefully soon uh, I'll be able to do a little bit of that. We're going to be doing some weapon and spaceship stuff. But um, yeah, so what he's talking about here, if you go to my playlists. And also one thing, so this, you go way down here, like this ZBrush mech helmet concept sculpt. You've probably seen this guy around. Uh, it's the making of this thing. Um, like I said, this is before Z Modeler. Possibly, this is this is a pretty old one. This is going on five years old now. But, um, you know, the making of this little mech helmet here, you can kind of watch that. Uh, and we'll do more videos on that. But if you go back through in my, in this channel here. So again, let me link you guys to this channel, the Pavlovich Workshop. If you go all the way back down to the beginning, you're going to start seeing like this little sci-fi female lady. Um, if we actually load that up. Let's see, streaming. ZBrush Female, I'll link you to that. So here's my workshop channel here. Uh, let's see, high res. So we've been refining this helmet. And there's a lot of techniques I want to use on her now um, as well. And then also the tech suit details. So if you go back through this channel and a little bit on my channel probably as well, um, we basically have the making of, wait for it. This lovely young lady. So we went through and kind of did a sci-fi tech suit sculpt. And we used lots of different techniques on her. Uh, but even for that turtle belly that we did, we used that exact same technique for these ribs on her uh, kind of bendy tech suit right here. It's the same same principle. You go through and you make different polygroups and then you uh, Z remesh them or Z sphere retopologize them and then you do a pan of loops and it kind of puffs them out. Then you can go through here and sculpt on these things. Um, these hard surface details, there's a ton of different ways to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and delete all here. And on this one here, this is the helmet that we're working on. So this is kind of the concepty phase, just kind of getting my forms figured out. Uh, how I want it to look, how I want it to be broken up, and then we're going to go through. Um, you can resurface these things, you can drag in alphas, you can detail it up, however you'd like. There's a million different ways to do this type of thing. Uh, but just kind of taking a step back and kind of looking at this, and also thinking about functionality. So like if she kind of takes her hand and then pops this lever up, and this lever swings forward here, ish, she goes, and then this thing pops off, and then this thing has like a little thumb latch here, you can pop this thing up here, it can like maybe rotate around here. And uh, these little these little things here can like maybe rotate out like so. You can pull those little levers and they'll uh, release these little gaskets or these little tubes here. So that kind of stuff is fun to think about. And then when you go in and you detail it up and even this thing here um, has a bar across her head. So these things here, well, you can rotate around here and they'll kind of scoop in. So these can be like another little, these can be out or in, depending on how the helm is going to function. And then this can like pop or pop this thing forward. And you got to make the sound effects. And then their little visor will go like. And then she could be like, hey, how's it going? And then she can move her face back. And then this can all pop back. Uh, and then her antennas can also rotate around. So anyway, you can see more on that.
So let me move, bring everything back. And so I don't forget, let's go ahead and do a save as, and we'll do streaming. Where am I at? Streaming, Mario World, Bowser Kids. We'll call this refine one. We're gonna refine this a bunch of times. So, um, ooh, for micro mesh, I got I got you covered. Now you can also, I mean, go to Pixelogic's website. Uh, Joseph Dress does a lot of stuff on micro mesh as well. I do use micro mesh for two different purposes. We do a nano mesh and we do a micro mesh. Um, what's it called? Let's see if these are in here. Yeah, fishnets. So here's how you can do uh, fishnets with micro mesh here. So I'll link you to that. Actually, you know what? I'll link you. I'll link you to that. So here's the micro mesh fishnets tutorial, and then the nano mesh fishnets tutorials here. You can check those out. Uh, but micro mesh is pretty easy. Um, you basically, and I honestly, I, I prefer nano mesh. It's just a little bit more robust. Um, but just basically, micro mesh takes a, an object. here. So we take this one, let's go ahead and clone that off here. And we'll just take this outer shell. And if you go through here, geometry, oh man, it's been a while since I've actually used micro mesh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Modify topology? Yeah, it's got to be in there, right? Yeah, micro mesh. Uh, so you can take micro mesh, you can change um, so micro mesh is only visible in best preview render. Turn on draw micro mesh in the render palette. So let's go to our render palette and we'll say render properties and we'll say draw micro mesh. Now we can see that ring. It's actually being drawn towards the camera. So if I hit BPR, it's going to replace every single um, face with that micro mesh. Now, if you want to change those, you can like align your edges so they all go in the same direction and all, all that kind of stuff. Now, like I said, I would probably prefer to do um, let's go to B. Let's see if we can just make a ring 3D here. Let's go to B. You know, with that ring 3D, let's go to brush, create, nano mesh brush. Oh, wait, we need to actually make this. So we're going to go to the side here. We're going to go to brush, create, insert mesh new, and then create nano mesh brush from that. You don't have to do that. You can actually select it through another method, but we'll do it that way. And then we can go through here and now we can do insert. Well, let's use our new brush we made. Insert nano mesh. And now we do need to keep micro mesh off. Now, instead of doing that, we're going to do insert nano mesh on polygrip ball. And now you can insert those rings on the entire object. And then because you have more flexibility in here, you can go through here and change the size or you can scatter them randomly across here. You can do interlinking chains if you want. You can change the width and the height and the length, all that good stuff. You can fit it to the square like so. So a lot of different really cool stuff you can do. And it's just an instance. So you can go through here and you can move your object around and it'll stick to it. And you can also go through here, for example, and you can hold down Alt and it's only going to be available to that polygroup that you drew. Alt, there we go. So you can go through here and change that. Anyways, it's eight o'clock. I gotta get out of here. Um, cool. Let me see if I miss anything. I can just uh, talk about real quick. Could you link your revolver tutorial, please? Yeah. So let's go to my YouTube channel. So the Zebra Four R Eight, what's new, has some stuff in there. You can see the revolver there. Uh, but I think. The one you're talking about is the Sci-Fi Pistol series. Let's go here. Let's go Sci-Fi Pistol series. This will take you through a bunch of 4R8 functionality as well. You can check that out. <laughs> yes, sorry, I'm gonna keep spamming. Spamming my links. Um, Super Mario stuff, that would be under the, uh, let me make sure I got stream here. Yeah, that would be under here. And you can just go back through my old videos and that'll be the more spam, more stuff here. Cool, yeah. And uh, yeah, Paul Gabriel on, did you know that? That would be, so if you, again, if you go to the Pixelogic channel here, 
I think he has his own playlist. Yeah, somewhere in here is like Ask a Zbrush is a good one. Uh, Paul Gravy is good. All these, all these people are really good. Definitely check them out. Cool. All righty. Um, way to turn a nano mesh brush into an insert brush. I actually turned my whole multi insert brush into a nano mesh brush. Um, yeah, yeah. What you can do, there's a plugin for that too. But as long as you have stuff up here to select, what you can do, just real quick before I leave. Uh, if you have poly mesh, uh, just have any poly mesh here. I think if you hit W and you select it, it'll go ahead and pop this in here. So if you accidentally turned it and you have a bunch of stuff up here, what you can do, brush, uh, insert. So say you have like this, you know, this, all of these things here. Um, you can hit W and then you can swap through here, but that's going to take a long time. Uh, and you can also go up here to brush. Um, brush from mesh, I think, somewhere in here. But the easiest way to take all of these things and put them back into subtools and then recreate your insert mesh brush is to go to the Z plugins and install this plugin called IMM Extractor. And then you can just uh, hit that. Uh, and then you're going to want to say, oh, there we go. IMM brush to subtools. It's going to go through here and extract all of these objects to subtools. And then once it's done that, I guess I pick the exact wrong one. This thing has 120 subtools in it. Uh, once it's extracted all those, then you just need to reposition your camera and then go to brush, create, insert mesh, and that'll create your new insert multi mesh. And that'll go ahead and recreate those. So, uh, and those, those, by the way, go to pixel logic downloads. Just Google that. Did it finally finish? I did some weird stuff on this thing. Let's delete that. I don't know what that is. There we go. So they're all facing how they should be facing. So now if we go here and we hit brush, create insert multi mesh, uh, that'll go ahead and create a brand new multi mesh from uh, whatever our subtools we had that we extracted. Um, go to just Google Pixelogic Downloads, go to the Pixelogic Download Center, or you can go just straight to the ZBrush plugins and then these employee created ones. I'm assuming trusted all or most of these, uh, there is the IMM extractor. You just download that, put it in the right folder, and instructions are with it. Cool. All righty. Thanks for showing up, everybody. I will see you Thursday morning on my channel, I think, unless I totally just sleep through my alarm or something. Thanks, everybody. See you all next week, or this week, and then next week on this channel.